Hi friends, welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my video. I'm going to paint on an 8x10 panel tonight. This is one that I put a couple coats of gesso on so it's got some nice texture to it. I went outside and cut some fresh um, lilacs. Uh, I'm going to spin you around. I hate to move you. I always have such issues putting you back where I had you. Oh, tilt you down, show you what I've got there. I just recently bought this sweet little purple pitcher and uh, put some of those fresh purple lilacs in there. And I've carried in a pair of antique shoe last that I have. I like the warmth. Um, set the lid down as you can see there next to the little uh, teapot. So that's what I'm thinking we're doing. So see how it goes. Tilt you back up here. Hopefully that's a pretty good view. Hopefully I can keep myself off the camera. Okay, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I work in water mixable oils. I say that every time. They're just oils that clean up with water. And I, I start a variety of ways. Um, Sometimes I'll put a wash on and I wipe out the, the drawing. I've done that. Sometimes I draw on with pencil. Sometimes I tone the canvas and then I put my drawing on. But I think of tonight I may just start with uh, some dark paint and sketch it on. I always use a view catcher. I love this thing. This one's getting pretty beat up. And I set it for an eight by 10. And we look through there. All right, do the best I can. This, this tripod's in my way a little bit. I wonder if I could back you up a little bit. Let's try that. All right. I'm going to leave the teapot off to one side and the shoe last over here. I feel like I'd like to leave some of the front of the table showing. I've talked about it before. I, Helen Van Wyck, I was a fan of her, and she's passed away, but there are videos on YouTube of her that are really good to watch. And she had a PBS, PBS series, and she painted fast, like you had to if you had one of those shows. And she would like do this kind of thing. I've showed this before, like here would be your flowers, here would be your teapot, you know, here would be your, your shoe last. Sometimes she'd do that kind of thing. And then from there, then she'd put the objects in. So it doesn't matter how you do it. And I don't typically do a real perfect sketch anyway. So I'm looking at the negative shape of the flowers. Something like that. Um, painted a lot of flowers and uh, I try to do them in an impressionistic style. If, for example, I'm doing daisies and I have a picture full of daisies, I will block in the whole shape of the daisies and then explain a few. I try not to over explain things. I just think, for me, I feel like it's a lot more interesting if you don't. So this pot's pretty much a, a little ball. So we actually could kind of sketch it that way. You know, it's like I said, it's pretty much a ball. So I've already I've changed this because if this is going to be set in here, it's going to have to be up on the table. So. Okay, to sketch the handle, what I usually do is I look at that hole in there, that the, the negative space, and it comes down behind this. And then how far down here till the spout starts, and how far from here to here to the bottom of the spout. And then 
it's kind of shaped at an angle. Got a little shadow here, which is nice on the teapot from the, the shoe last. And hopefully I like this composition. I um, carried in different things. I have a lot of little <coughs> sweet pictures. I had a little green pitcher set in here at first. Thought about that. If you're not familiar with what these are, they're called shoe last, and they made shoes. They're antique and they would make shoes around this mold. They were different sizes. Um, I've got uh, several pair, couple baby ones. They're very different though, the one pair from the other. And this pair comes up high above that one. You know, and you could, however you want to draw, I mean, you could create it, your shape by the, doing that, I mean, going back and forth, whatever helps you, you know. Now, I'm looking at it to the side. If I like it or not. Look at this shape. We got some shadows up in here. And then the fabric runs about right in there. All right, so we'll grab a brush, a fairly large brush. It doesn't really matter where we start. I think we'll start with the teapot. Don't know why. Um, I use a limited palette, a warm and cool of each primary, and white. And I have uh, Indian yellow and transparent red oxide on here. And your truest purple is going to be your coolest blue and your coolest red. So ultramarine blue and crimson is going to be your truest purple that you can mix. So I mix those two and then I put a little white in there and see where we're at. And then you can pull that, you know, cooler with more blue or you can make it a mauve kind of rosier color with uh, more crimson. So I want to mix up like um, three values for the pot. Got something very dark, something in between, and then lighter, and then there are a few actual, you know, bright highlights on the pot too. I like working that way, mixing up uh, three values. Gives you some options, and you can inter, I've said this before, but then you can intermix those to one another and uh, come up with something in between those. But it's a nice, nice way to start. So let's take the darkest darks and look to see where we see those. A little in the spout. And again, this is a big brush, so a little hard to control. And I, I use a big brush because I want it to be impressionistic and looser. And if I work with a big brush as long as I can stand it, you know, I just don't have as much control. And I don't have a medium. So if I decide to thin, I just 
touch the littlest bit of water and we didn't tone the canvas which you know sometimes I do and sometimes I don't I went out and painted the other day in in my car and uh, I like to do that and I put a pink tone on the canvas again you saw me do that on here a while back and uh, did a little some houses and I like I like it I liked that pink poking through so I'm just trying to paint what I see up there that's a, our darkest darks this is kind of in between and I mentioned Helen Van Wyck and a lot of times she would just block in the whole shape in like a general color then she'd come back with her darks and lights and that's a way you can work too um, I tend to just try to look around and paint what I see I always say it's like a puzzle I bought this I don't know if I said this or not I bought this little teapot up in Waynesville Ohio um, neat town north of here and a uh, little she calls it a tea shop that we went into and uh, she had a lot of teapots all over the place very good prices I bought this one and uh, a beautiful brown one they were only six dollars a piece I, I you know I just wonder how she can sell them for those prices so if you're into teapots and you live anywhere near Waynesville Ohio you should go check her out I did not need, I even said when I went in there, I am not buying any more teapots. <laughs> but I did. Let's see, is a little brown one sitting here I can show you? Hmm, it was right here. Oh, it's over there. Maybe I'll show it to you later. You know and we may to make this interesting like um, that's my lightest value there you know we may mix uh, and I am I'm mixing more crimson in you know we'll change it up you know going to Marymont Ohio Saturday to paint in a plein air competition um, so far the cicadas are not here because we've been cool and I'm hoping they won't pop out by then I'm doing it anyway though gonna be brave <laughs> I don't like them I think I told you that like my grandsons I've never seen them that's be a new experience for them. And this value, I'm going to go in and lighten it up a little bit because it's a little dark compared to my shadow. I want that shadow area to stand out. That's a nice thing about oils. You can mix right here on the canvas. And if I had a tone under here, you know, I could just dry brush and, and lay the color down and leave it. I wouldn't have to work as hard to um, get the canvas covered. So there's advantages to that. Now, warm colors tend to come toward you and cool colors recede. So I'm going to add a little warmth to the front area here we'll see how that works maybe maybe not
mixed up the new colors. So I came up with something a little bit different. And it's a little bluer. a little rim to this. We'll and it gets a little darker as it goes away from the light. If you don't paint, you don't know what you're missing out on. It's just the best thing. I've gotten so really enjoy painting in my car. It's quiet and I, you know, no wind, no bugs. I've become a famous plein air car painter, right? <laughs> Got a little, um, tri you probably saw that, triangle t shape on the top of that uh, lid. There's a guy that does a lot of ball jars, and I do a lot of ball jars too, but last time I watched, he did a demo when he put the highlight on, and I, he smeared it with his finger, which was pretty effective, really. But we'll come back and revisit this, but... There's a little bit of green in there, which is nice. So let's put that in. Well, I'm going to keep it pretty dark for now. It's always the way I start. You can always come in and lighten it. You're always better to be too dark, I feel. You know, keep your white out of there for as long as you can. And this is a transparent green, too. And we'll be, of course, lightening it up. But the more I push it, the you know, the lighter it gets. Yeah, I have some irises out there too. I debated about bringing in some of them. Of course, they're pretty large. Um, irises are challenging if you've never painted them, in my opinion. 
actually all flowers can be and some people do not like painting flowers um, I think the thing is the thing is with them is not overthink them you know we get too picky with them and all right we have purple flowers too um, they're lighter so let's start with uh, our blue and our red again and they're more toward the crimson than they are the blue and again they're pretty light so probably what we're going to do just we're just going to block in the whole general shape of them now is that light enough probably not because i'm looking at the pot because as i look over there they are lighter so a little more crimson more white with flowers um, if you explain a few of them i've said this before but the mind knows what they're looking at if you had again if you masked this in and it was daisies and you just explain one or two in the front people know they're looking at daisies and it's it's a lot more fun to view that way so something to consider and when these are done if you don't know what kind of flower they are what difference does it make you know So again, I'm just going for the whole shape here. I have a video on here from last year where I painted outside and painted uh, irises, these little delicate irises that haven't bloomed yet for me. But um, go watch that if you're interested in flowers. I think it came out nice. I'm looking at the outside shape you know we don't just want one little mound good enough for now this I have it more blue than I see it there but I don't know that it matters um, all right let's move on to our block in here and they're obviously brown. I'm sorry, warm. They're a warm color. So I'm going to put take some transparent red oxide. We'll start there. And they're more yellow than that, so we'll put some yellow in it. And the same thing with the pot. You know, I'm going to have some different values to work with. put in the darkest parts of them that we see first a little shadow there
you know, will people understand what these are? Some people will, of course. <coughs> Some won't. Get a drink of water. Wow. Just a fun challenge to paint something you don't, you know, it's out of your comfort zone. Actually, I'm going to mix up a little orange, some red and yellow. I lightened that, but I feel like it should be richer. Anyway, I'm doing the paint out, and I don't know what I'm painting until I get there. I uh, I had in mind to maybe look for a house with some flowers, you know, something pretty like that. But then if you paint in town where people see you, it can be an advantage to that too, because we have an opening that night from uh, 6 to 8. You know, um, and sometimes people come Hopefully people will come to buy. And they're allowing us to bring um, an extra painting this time, which is kind of nice. I'm taking one that I've got of a rooster. <coughs> And I'm always thinking more about value than I am color. I mean, like, I'm thinking more about value as I'm... Sometimes I just grab stuff that's on my palette, if it's the right value. Because it is more about value than it is about color. It's kind of high and pointy. that little edge a little bit. Down on that toe we've got some reflected light from the uh, tablecloth. 
So that's our block in of our objects. So let's go ahead and uh, just keep moving with the block in and let's um, paint the background in. And I want, I want uh, I'm just mixing together actually some of the things that are on my palette. The purple is red and blue, so we'll throw some yellow in it. Let's see where that takes us. Because I'm working to get a, um, well, we'll have a bit of a shadow here, but more of a gray tone. And I, as I look up at it up there, it's um, kind of a, it's black, but where the light's hitting it, it's, it's warmer. So, making basically a mud, you know, of all, of all my colors. <coughs> amazing how much darker that looks up there than it does on my palette. So let's lighten it up a little bit. We'll make it a little warmer and lighter. Again, if I had a tone on here, you know, we could just leave it peeking through, which would be nice maybe. But we don't. So let it go, Barb, right? <laughs> it's not on there. I'm planning on Saturday, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm messed up. I'm planning on Saturday putting a pink tone on my canvas before I start. I've got that in my mind to do. Before I quit here, if I remember, I will show you this painting I did outside the other day. If you're up to painting outside, it is so such a good exercise. You just see things different compared to painting from a photo. I'm grabbing I don't want this to all be the same color, so I'm grabbing different stuff here. You know, we don't want it to be all one solid color back here. about the shattered area over there. I don't know how much of it you'll see, but um, like there's some of it here. Yeah, painting is wonderful and I always say that it's so humbling because it's hard. It is hard. You know, you do it one time and it goes well, and it's just, you know, never, no, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it just kind of paints itself, and it's just so wonderful when that happens, but I always say it can kick your butt. It so can. those darks into there too.
Okay, and this area down in here is our tablecloth and it's lighter. But we do have shadows, a few shadows here. And we'll come back at the end to kind of ground things too, you know. Okay, so we'll take this same mixture, but we'll go lighter. And we'll maybe we'll throw a little yellow in it. Okay, now we can look at the shape of this shoe last as we do this. And I don't personally like a real hard division between my background and my foreground. Some people do a very hard line. And again with the oil paint, I mean, show it off if you want. Paint it on there really heavy, I mean. You can do that with acrylics too, don't get me wrong, but. All right, we'll look at the shape of this lid. picked up a little purple. You know, sometimes that's fun, stuff like that. Okay, is that going to be confusing? describes the shape of the lid. But it's kind of unusual, you know, when it's all said and done, we may not like it even. So there's our block in. I'm looking at, I almost feel like that could be out a little further. And like I said, my pot is definitely bluer, but I don't know that it bothers me. All right, now let's go look at it. Let's look at our flowers again. I'll clean off my brush a little bit. Now the greens we put up there were pretty dark, so now we're going to go back and hit them with some lighter lights. So off marine, some yellow, maybe a touch of white. Because some of them um, are catching light. Or part of them anyway. Got one back here catching some light, which I think is kind of interesting. Shooting across. 
and most of this is in light, really. Um, so I think what we'll do there are. I'm squinting, squinting to see the lightest lights on this. Um, thinking about the shape of them, you know. And even though they're lit pretty heavy and they all, not a lot of variation in value, you know, I don't want to, I don't think I want to paint them that way. trying to look where I have the most light, surprisingly way over here. And if you were a realist, you'd be painting every little one of these little things. Or if maybe they were your mother's favorite flowers, you know, you'd want to paint them just like you see them. But
Okay, I'm going to mix a little orange in here. I don't know, that may muddy it up, but just trying some stuff. Give them a little variation. You know, and you can throw some little pieces out there in the air even, you know, not attached and that can be charming. So for me, you know, it's more about uh, just texture and color than it is. If they were daisies, you'd know they were daisies, but Maybe we'll get our little liner brush out for a few of these highlights. And again, like usual, I've got more than one light source, so Sometimes it's hard to distinguish where you're getting it from, you know. This is fairly dark to me. I'm going to just go over that and that'll You know, you could even take mostly white with just a little something else in it you know, and hit the flowers with that. And I am looking for where the lightest ones are. Again, sometimes not where you expect them.
anybody that would understand these might understand. There's like a hole in the middle there. So I'm adding it. ground them a little bit, all these objects. All right, looking over there to see what else we see. I'm going to put a bit of a lighter light inside of both of these. They don't really seem to be catching any other light. Reflected light, I always kind of like it. Put a little bit of that purple in there. And we're going to put a little bit of the warmth from the shoe into the pot. Alright, let's look at these really dark shapes again. If you want to soften them. one I had there. looking to see what else. I don't want to lose the shape of this and I wonder if a little light might explain it better. It's very, very light. Too light. But I want the little shoelace to stand out from the... And I like, I like this edge here. It's a nice edge. Call it quits, I think. So again, you could throw more, you know, suggestion of petals out there, whether they're there or not. You know, do whatever you want, whether you see it or not. You know, maybe we'd like to bring that leaf down a little more. You know, it's your st it's your story of the object, so. When it, you start off painting, I think you, you're really trying to reproduce what you see. But the longer you do it, I think the more you think about making it, you know, an interesting painting. And people can say what they want, that you didn't exactly nail it, but it's, it's your interpretation of it. So it's whatever you want it to be. It's not wrong. We all paint different. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. Again, my pot is more blue, but I'm going to look at it a while and decide if I care. Again, that's the way I painted it. So let me stand up and show you. How long have we been at this? 
just about an hour. That's pretty good. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. Two here. Maybe too wet to do this, but we may try to sign it. I don't have my brush that I love. It's a little more crowded over here, you know. I tend to sign on the right, but I may do this later. Yeah, I'm going to do it later when it's not so wet. As far as signature, I mean, I like to sign and, and it not be distracting, you know. So I tend to I tend to use a fine liner brush and I tend to do it small. Um, I may leave those vertical strokes there. I kind of like them. Um, and I decide once it's done whether it's going to be left or right. I don't really plan that ahead. Um, but again, it shouldn't be distracting from the painting. So, you know, too big, too... So, and some signatures are hard. It can be an issue for a lot of people if you have a big name or... But mine's easy. It's small. All right, let me stand up and show you what we got. I appreciate you joining me again. And please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get up to a thousand. Well, more than that, but... All right, there it is. kind of like it. I'm pretty happy with it. It's painterly, like I wanted. Um, I don't, again, know that you would know type flowers they are, but I don't know that matters. A lot of juicy paint in there and, and some different values, some warmer tones and lighters. And, and I think the shoe last read pretty well, if you know what they are. <laughs> Let's crank you down. And I'll show you the set, setup again. Uh, bear with me there. There we go. Again, this pot is uh, has more crimson in it, you can tell. And the flowers are purple. They don't read. Maybe they do. Okay, there it is. So I hope you enjoyed watching. It was fun to do. I need another still life, like I need a hole in the head. <laughs> Oh, and I'll put my website, uh, the link for that below, too, in the description box so you can check out more of my work if you'd like. Join me next time. You have a nice night. Bye-bye.